Thanks, uh, Jim. And I think I might uh, start off with a little bit of back and forward between the panel and just offer Sinclair right of uh, reply on those comments for um, that, that should be just fine. Um, my view around the GST is that it is a Commonwealth tax. We went to at least one election, 1998, where the model was voted at an election, the government put forward a plan, it won the election. It, it didn't necessarily win the popular vote, but it won the seats in Parliament. The plan was that the Commonwealth would raise an excise tax because the states are, pro are constitutionally prohibited from an excise tax. The Commonwealth would raise an excise tax and the money would be distributed by the Commonwealth Grants Commission under the formula and approach that they adopted. What we see now is a system that works as planned, as advertised, as designed. Um, there is no unusual anomaly. There's no unintended consequences. The money is allocated as it was said it was going to be advertised. The issue around whether or not Western Australia allows gambling or not, well, I don't care if they gamble, if they want to whatever they want to do in Western Australia is up to them. I see no reason why I should pay for their lifestyle choices. If they don't want to gamble and they don't raise the money, we shouldn't give them our money. I would rather have a tax cut than some welfare bum in, in Western Australia getting my money. This is our money. It is not their money. So the idea is to say the money is raised in Western Australia. The money is raised anywhere. It is a Commonwealth tax. Now, in the ideal world, we would abolish the Commonwealth Grants Commission, we would abolish the Commonwealth too. But in the meantime, we have a system that works as planned, as advertised, there's no anomalies, there's no strangeness. Um, they don't need a top-up. The GST tops you up under the, under the Buchanan theory. They don't need a top-up because they've got their own money. You look to yourself before you look to others for welfare. This, this is also a very uncontroversial idea. So um, I, I don't see why we should be too upset about the Western Australians. I do agree they can't plan ahead, but that is tough. That is an inherent flaw with the methodology. You can't fix it. So I'm trying to remember, but off the top of my head, when Howard went to the election, which was a very brave thing to do on the GST, I think every state was Labour, correct me if I'm wrong, and they all opposed him. So they were pretty much all liberal. Okay. <laughs> okay, well they all they all the states were against. They were all the states were against, I guess I'm thinking two thousand seven. And the GS the GST is a pool of money that is raised how it's it's a Commonwealth tax, but the money is raised based on what you spend in each state. Okay, so fine. So on the model that that you, once you've agreed to this, you're locked in forever. I'm not clear, given that Sinclair wants to eliminate the GST, how you would go about the combo. How do you go about changing the system? So it's now got the effect unseen anywhere else in the world where a particular state is getting back almost none of the money that has been raised by citizens in its own state. You call it combo tax. But the money is being raised by people buying things in Western Australia. And they're not getting any of that, but they're getting a, a small fraction of that money back. Now, that's not sustainable over the long period anywhere, not even in Australia. So how do you go about changing that? I mean, one thing you could say is, well, you know, you, sh you should be making more liberal sort of policies. But the Western Australians can say that about South Australia. If anything, they look better than the South Australian policies. They could say it about Victoria. You know, you ought not to be spending that $600 million not to dig a hole, not to fill it in. You know, that's Keynesian without actually digging the hole and filling it. It's fantastic. It's very efficient Keynesian, isn't it? Um, so they have a lot of arguments on there, too. Now, are they going about this the right way? I don't think they are. I agree with Julian. They should be very, very aggressive. If Colin Barnett went crazy, I think he'd win. I think he'd win, but he's just not... <laughs> In the, in, now, the, the idea of actually having getting rid of, say, a Commonwealth person income tax and replacing it with a state-based income tax is, is, is an old idea in Australia. As a matter of fact, in the 1970s, Mr. Fraser actually suggested this to the states. There would be a state-based tax in Australia. Well, there would be a variation, like, like, like the UK model, okay. Every single state ran a mile. No, These not. guys do WA not. WA did not. Sorry. WA did not. All right, WA did not. But okay, everybody except WA ran a mile. People didn't want this. 
And, and you generally speaking find state politicians do not want to raise the, the money that they spend. They want to spend the money that somebody else has raised. Now, this is, now I understand this perfectly well, but this is the problem with the GST, is that I'm sure they've all bitched and complained in public, and in the meantime they've all signed on the line, they took the money. Uh, Mr. Hockey actually dared anybody on any of the states a couple of weeks ago, he said, look, if you don't want the GST, fine, um, reintroduce all those horrible nuisance taxes that we abolished when we brought in the GST. And not one of them has said, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll bring back the bed tax or any of the other crap ideas. Oh, Peter, there's probably a whole long list of these things. Nobody is saying this to this. They are happy to take the GST. They are happy to take the money. I understand the Western Australians want more money. Yeah, we all want more money. We all want more of somebody else's money. Um, this is not a problem. This is perfectly understandable. Hang on, hang on. Julian, do you have something to add there? <laughs> you're, you're not Julian. <laughs> I was just going to add, add to Cynthia's point. I think a lot of state politicians are like welfare recipients. They like, they like sit down. I mean, uh, we should have a sense of mutual obligation here. Um, if you're going to spend the money, you have to put some sweat into raising the money. Let me clarify, because I could see our friend over there getting agitated earlier about the uh, state income tax idea. One in three tax dollars that the Commonwealth collects is sent back to the states. It's a giant money laundering scheme. And it doesn't send the money back to the state that collects it. What a state income tax would do would take a big cut out of the Commonwealth income tax. You'd get less tax, less federal tax, and you'd have a state income tax that would be set at competitive rates. So if South Australia wanted to be a big tax state, it could be a big tax state, and it would suffer the consequences that Jim talked about. And if New South Wales wanted to be a low tax state, we could take the benefit of that. Before we move on and uh, take some questions from the floor, uh, Sinclair mentioned uh, right at the start of his speech the abolition of the Commonwealth. And I just wondered if uh, any of the other panellists here would like to venture into that territory and give their thoughts. <laughs> I, 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 I think it's a lovely pipe dream. I don't think we should, uh, we're ever going to abolish the Commonwealth. I think we should have a leaner, more efficient, more constrained Commonwealth, but um, I don't think we want to abolish it. I'll echo Julian's comments there, um, uh, and I, I probably shouldn't admit to this, but I somewhat sign up to the um, uh, arguments in favour of maintaining the Commonwealth that Sinclair was uh, pointing out um, in terms of having a um, defence, and I'd add to that um, international representation as well. So on a political, yeah, and there's the importance of cricket, and uh, don't forget rugby as well. Um, <laughs> And the Commonwealth Games, of course, which everyone has glued to. Look, the, the, the cricket example is a good one. Um, in, in the West Indies, West Indies for at the time had a had a loose federation, but it ultimately fell apart, and eventually their cricket team fell apart as well. So. <laughs> 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 right. Sam, 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 you guys are really sort of arguing about which government we should give this power to. You're not really arguing about whether or not the government should have this power at all. And I say this, I'm, I'm from regional Victoria, so you guys are talking about whether or not Canberra should have the power or Spring Street in Melbourne should have the power. Well, I think they're both Pacquiao's. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather the power be with someone within arm's reach of me, which is not Spring Street in Melbourne any more than it's Parliament House in Canberra. Wouldn't the better argument be to talk about getting it all the way down to local level and, and perhaps even getting rid of it at all? Can, can I take this as the person who ran the Citizens No campaign for the local government referendum? Um, I'm sure you can name a number of ministers in the federal government. I'm sure you can name a number of ministers in the state government. I'd be amazed if you could name more than your mayor on your local council, let alone any other councils. And this is the problem with ideas that we should give local council more power. These people are, and I'm a former local councillor, these people are completely unaccountable. Um, nobody knows who they are. And, and, and I, I should look, there are very good councillors, they are the exception that proves the rule. But in the main, um, they, are, they are completely unaccountable. No one knows what they do, and most of the time they're sort of ego drippers and, uh, and political wannabes. Yes, yes, yes. Is there another answer? Well, yeah, and I guess I'd, I'd add to that that 
the Commonwealth wants to bring in the local government because they can manipulate the local government. You know, to, there's still a little bit of ability for the states to say no, they never do, but there'd be no ability for the local government. I mean, I, I take your point, but if you look at places like Switzerland or Canada, um, the cost of government is low, and, and and Switzerland has very low taxes, and they decentralize down, and it's a very successful sort of system. So there is some government, but it's, you know, they've managed to do it because, you know, there's 60% German, 40 French or 30 French and Italians and Romans, and then you get the, the Catholic Protestant split, and so decentralizing is the only way to keep the place going, and it's had these good consequences. And part of our constitution we actually copied from the Swiss, which is the referendum, section 128. The only reason we're not a republic today is because of section 128, where you have to actually ask people. Constitutional change in Canada and the U US, you don't ask people, you ask politicians. And politicians would have answered miles ago. We'd have a recognition clause, we'd have we'd be a refer we'd be a republic because the politicians will you know if you only ask the politicians they'll just change the constitution quite easily. So I really like the fact I really like the fact in our constitution you can't actually change it without actually asking the voters. And the voters most of their calls you know, have been 44. I agree with almost all of them, which is almost always to say no. And then, 36 <laughs> times I can't remember 36 out of 44. We have a great constitution. That's and John Stone. Could I just I relate a, a small anecdote to, to support what Cynthia is, well, I think, or, or what you have already saying. By the way, Cynthia, I think you should demean yourself by talking about getting rid of the Commonwealth. I think that's silly, a silly statement and it under, under, you know, underrates you, so to speak. Um, but, uh, just before the Queensland election, I rang somebody in the, premier's de the then Premier's Department and said, look, you're proposing to... Uh, yeah sell off some of the polls and wires and stuff, whatever they prefer to sell, and you propose to spend it all on other things, you know, roads and railways and stuff. But did it ever occur to you, you might devote some of this, whatever the figure was, 15, 20 billion dollars, to cutting some of your taxes, like your stamp duties on insurance policies, your stamp duties on motor vehicle registration, your stamp duties on this, that, and the other damn thing, you know. I knew what the answer was going to be, but I just wanted to hear him say, tell me, tell me. He said, yeah, well, he, said, he said, we had thought of that, but the trouble is, he said, if we did it, the Grand Commission would take it away, take it all away from us. Which is true. It precisely makes the point that's being made about the ridiculous, the whole way that the Grand Commission is working for that. Now, then, let me say one other thing about the Grand Commission. The Grand Commission was